Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another paint making video. Uh, I haven't done a paint making video in a while. We'll talk about my plans for future paint making handmade watercolor things in a couple of minutes. But first, let's talk about the color that I'm going to be showing you today. I've been daydreaming about this combination of pigments for a couple weeks now and I really have been itching to get back into paint making and to give this a try and honestly it's been so exciting and now that I have plans for what I want to do with my handmade watercolors like more concrete plans I'm just so excited to get back into it and to keep trying things. So the two pigments that we are mixing today are PB29 which is ultramarine blue and PY53 which is nickel titanium yellow. So I've made nickel titanium yellow on this channel before. It's a really soft, almost kind of milky pastel yellow color. And then of course, um, ultramarine blue is a warmer, more purple-like granulating blue. So this specific combination of blue and yellow doesn't make a very saturated green. And my plan was to make sort of a misty blue green, something that would lean closer to blue and I'm really happy with how the color turned out. You'll see I did make a little bit of adjustments as I went along. Both of these two pigments, the blue and the yellow, both use a one-to-one -one ratio of binder to pigment, so it was pretty easy to figure out how I wanted to mix them together. I knew that I needed equal parts binder and pigment for both of them, so I ended up doing two teaspoons of each and then making a little bit of adjustments later on to add some more blue just to get the color that I wanted. I'm also doing a smaller batch here than usual. For some reason I just always jumped into larger batches when I was doing paint making in the past. I just naturally always used the same amount of binder which made larger batches and I don't know why it took me you know over a year and a half to go hey if I'm testing a new color maybe I should make a small batch to start to see how it works out. I don't know why I never stopped to actually think about that but that's okay. We've talked about this a lot before but paint making is very often a lot of trial and error and learning as you go. It doesn't always turn out amazing the very first time and I'm excited to be at a point now where I'm making colors that I have made in the past and I have the binder to pigment ratios for pretty much all of the colors that I have because I've made them at least once before and figured it out. So hopefully the hardest part is over for a lot of these. I know it's not always perfect, especially when you're trying something new, but I'm definitely in a phase of paint making that I'm really excited about. Let's go ahead and talk about what my plans are for my handmade watercolors. I talked about wanting to sell them at first, maybe um, putting them as a reward on Patreon, and really what was holding me back was the idea of taking the potentially weeks to make the paints and fill the half pans, and then to create labels for the half pans, to wrap them, package them, print shipping labels for everything. It's fine if paint making was going to be my full-time job, but I already have a full-time job and I didn't want to have a second full-time job. So I had to really do some brainstorming and compromising and thinking about how I want to share these paints with you guys. And I've decided to do monthly dot cards. So what we'll be doing is every month there will be a trio of colors and I will make dot cards. Um, with, you know, a nice generous little dot of each of the three colors on a postcard size piece of watercolor paper and only those three colors available each month. I can't give you an official release date at this point because I still need to make the other two colors. I already know what they will be, but we'll save that for a future surprise and it's colors I've made before. So it's just a matter of making more batches of paint and getting those dot cards designed and prepped and ready. It's possible that that could happen this month, in the month of September, that that would be launched. Of course, I will let you guys know ahead of time when those paints are going to be launched, and there will be an official video for all of that, so you guys will know ahead of time. I wanted to do something that would be cost efficient for me, but also for you guys, because handmade watercolors can definitely be expensive, and I wanted to have a way 
for you guys to try the paints that I was making without it costing a ton of money and something that would be relatively simple for me to package and ship. So I'm hopeful and I'm excited about this idea and I'm looking forward to sharing paints with you. The only exception to the half pan thing is that I do have quite a few half pans of paint that I've made already and I am planning to sell those but I'm not planning to restock those half pans. So the full pans that I have created so far, or the full half pans rather, um, I will be listing for sale eventually. I'm not sure exactly when, but once I have all of those packed up, I will list them limited quantities on my shop. Again, you guys will know ahead of time. And once those half pans are gone, I, I don't know if I will be restocking them because I anticipate that being just a lot of work to do, but I don't want to just sit on all the paint I've made so far when you guys could be enjoying it. So again, plans are in the works for all of that, and I'm, I'm so excited to get to share these with you guys. It's going to be lots of fun. If you have any questions about any of that, please just let me know down in the comments. We are well into the process of making this color here, so let's move back to talking about that. Some really interesting effects that I liked while making this batch of watercolors was seeing how the blue and the yellow kind of naturally separated from one another, which was really what I wanted. That ultramarine blue is a granulating color, so I wanted to see some interesting texture and separation there. I'm using the last little bit of a pre-made binder that I had, and this binder is very thick and very sticky. I actually don't like it as much as my handmade binder, but I wanted to just use up the last of it and test it out and try this color combination while I was making my new batch of binder. I didn't want to wait. So this first little test batch was very sticky and much thicker than what my handmade binder does. And it was really interesting because with my handmade binder, I'm also adding a synthetic ox gall. So the color actually spreads and granulates a little differently because of that. You can see how as I was working the batch longer and longer, the yellow wants to disperse in the pigment right away. And it doesn't take much time for that to be a beautiful workable color. But the blue, the ultramarine blue, leads a, needs a little bit more work. So you can see that as the color progressed, that blue became more and more prominent in the mix. And it was really exciting to see how that changed and see how that color developed. Just so, so, so much fun. The swatches you're seeing here are for that initial small batch. And I will show you later on when we get close to launching the final color, but it does look a little bit different. It's more of a um, solid color with slight granulation with a little bit less separation between the blue and green in the final color in the batch I made with my handmade binder. And it was so interesting to see how just the different recipes of binder could affect the way a color turns out. I'll have to keep that in mind. Maybe this will be a color that doesn't get that synthetic ox gall and I just used my handmade binder by itself so that the granulation is a little bit more patchy almost and not as dispersed if that makes sense. It's kind of difficult to explain but you guys will see it in the future when I show you the final dot cards that I will be selling. I wanted to do some test dot cards for this color as well just to see how the paint would dry on a sheet of watercolor, how it would reactivate um, the size of dot cards and all of that. So I was just testing all of that out. I've already changed and improved the process for how I will be making these dot cards and all of that. This was just a test. I'm thinking that the dot cards that I made today, I have quite a few of them now. I think I have close to 30 little dot cards. I might slip those in to Patreon awards for this month or something like that. We'll see. I'm just so ready to start sharing my paints with you guys and getting those out there, getting back into making paint making videos. It's just, it's going to be, it's going to be super great. If there are any specific colors that you guys are interested in seeing me make, I'm kind of itching to make a brown. I haven't done a brown on the channel yet. Not really, I don't think. And I'm kind of missing 
some really nice browns. I have some pigments that I would really like to figure out, some stuff that has given me trouble in the past, specifically with making browns. So I think it could be fun to take the time to try to figure those pigments out. Anyway, I'm excited for the future and for more paint making content. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this color down in the comments. As always, the biggest thank you to my patrons and my members here on YouTube. You can check out either of those platforms if you're interested in art rewards or also more YouTube-based rewards like shoutouts at the end of my videos or weekly vlogs and monthly real-time videos, all that kind of stuff. Thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.